Hey, what's up everybody? This is Etho, and welcome back to Hermitcraft. Uh-huh, yeah, so it's been a little bit of time since the last Hermitcraft episode. Sorry about that, I had a lot of goofing off I needed to do. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot to handle all at once, you know, it's a lot of goofing off. Only one person can, can do so much, right? Uh, but then I also had some real-life trouble come up recently. I have uh, car trouble, had to help someone shingle a roof, and, uh... Also, my internet changed recently, it's had some downtime with that, and yada, yada, yada. Excuses, excuses. Even Mr. Zombie here missed the episodes, right, Mr. Zombie? He shook his head, yes, look at that. Amazing. Okay, so let's get into it here. As you can see, the one who has really missed me the most, who has been waiting, who has been probably fuming, <laughs> Mr. Beatups, asked me over a month ago to work on the horse track, right? And it's still not done. We need to get to that today. But look at this, he has made an amazing stable just outside of it here. Yeah, so I think the main project we should work on today is to try to get this horse track up and running, at least our part of it. Again, the way this is going to work is we're going to do the gamey part of it, the functional stuff, and then B-Dubs is going to come in later and make it uh, look nice. He's going to do the aesthetic stuff, and we'll split up the project that way. But he's waiting on me. I need to get my part done. <laughs> so I just got started on it briefly here. Let's check out a couple things. So... I thought uh, this would be a good starting spot for the race. You got like it's uh, at the top of the hill here. We can look down at the track a little bit. I just installed a little note block too. And I was trying to think of like, how should we do this? Should we do the Mario cartoon? The beep, 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 beep kind of thing. Or should we go for... Uh, the way this works is we got to keep the fence gates open if we're doing multiple laps We don't want this to be closed afterwards. So to set this I got we're gonna manually close these and then at the start of the race when we hit this They open up uh, down below here is all the, the note blocks and the redstone Now whatever we build here we got to keep kind of simple like I was thinking about maybe putting down a, a checkered finish line white and black lull but then I got to thinking, like, maybe B-Dubs wants to do a rustic-looking racetrack. And that would be more like for a modern racetrack. And it, it'll mess up his theme, or it'll influence him into a certain theme. And I want that to be totally up to B-Dubs, whatever he wants to do. So whatever we build, we're going to try to keep simple and leave it up to him. Uh, just outside of the starting line here, we're either going to be able to go left and carry on with the track, or take a pit stop to heal up our horses. Uh, the idea with this is it's going to have a dispenser with healing potions to heal up the horses. So I think I've learned something very important now after the many years of failed projects with B-dubs. The scope of the project really matters. Initially, I'm thinking like, hey, you know what would be cool? Let's keep track of everybody's laps. Let's keep track of everybody's lap time with some fancy redstone timer. I get all these dumb ideas, right? And it's like they add so much time to the project. Let's just focus on what really matters. You know, people can tr keep track of the laps in their head. It's not a big deal. Let's just focus on getting the basic systems in. And if we want to add more fancy stuff later, we can. So I've done a little section of track here just to get a feel for how I want to do this. And one thing I noticed right away, like I went down here because we had this overpass. It's going to be a cross section. Uh, the, the track is supposed to continue over top of this. So I was like, okay, let's, let's make it go down here. And I really like how it feels with the, the walls surrounding us, right? I think we should do the whole course like that. Compared to like when you're horsing around up here, it feels kind of empty, kind of open and empty, right? It doesn't feel as good. Now, when you do a project like this, there's so many little questions you start asking yourself. Like, what would be a good challenge? How close together should these challenges be? And like little stuff like that starts to add up and you can find yourself in a, a place where it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's a blank sheet of paper and uh, if you have no guidance, you're going to make a terrible story, right? So one guiding principle for our track here is something I realized with game design. Like one way to scale difficulty in a game is to make a jump harder and harder, for example, until it's like a pixel perfect jump that you can just barely do. But the problem with that is it becomes more and more frustrating, I find, personally anyways, to try to do that challenge in the game. A better way of game design, I feel, is to do many little challenges and then compound them together. So if you were to focus on one of those challenges, like this little jump here, it's not, it's not difficult at all. I can do this little jump here too, not a problem. Now we got this little extra challenge up ahead here. 
where we gotta time our our horse going through so that the gate is open when we arrive. It flips back and forth between the two, right? Oh, I made it through, no problem, right? And then we got a little jump thing here. All these challenges, nice and easy to do. So the interesting thing about this is if we try to go through this section of track quickly on our horse without stopping, then it becomes very difficult because each individual challenge sort of stacks on top of each other. Oh, I messed up. And even though each individual one is not challenging, when they stack together by doing them in quick succession, then it starts to overwhelm you and you make more and more mistakes. So the faster your horse in this course, <laughs> uh, the more difficult it actually gets and you're more likely to make a mistake, which is great because having a fast horse gives you a distinct advantage, right? That there should be some downside. And I mess it up every time. Um, so there's a couple interesting things about this as well. So for one thing, when you do this first jump, you could do like a big jump to get over top of this just to make sure you do it, right? But then it becomes difficult to make the second jump because you're closer to this edge when you land that you have way less time to make the jump on this. So the ideal thing you actually want to do is to just barely tap the jump button and kind of glide over each of these these pits and uh, just make it like that. But as you're doing that, you also have to pay attention to the lights up ahead there. So these challenges are stacking together, right? And you have to exert a lot of brain power to get through this without messing up. So I've been working on the horse track and my tools are starting to need to repair so I came back to the base here also to pick up some supplies and on the way I ran into Doc M. Now just to give you a bit of context on this, about a month ago we made a deal, I sold him some tridents. Okay, so do you think 20 diamonds per trident is a fair price? That sounds about right to me, yeah. So I need five, so that's 100 diamonds. 100 diamonds. Then I get, you know, bulk, bulk discount. Right? I'll, I'll give you the nice guy's face discount. Not for you, but for Ren. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> kidding. At the moment, I owe you 90 diamonds. 90 diamonds, right? yeah. Okay, sweet. Come on, one down payment, though. One block of diamond, I think I can spare. You only got a block? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting, you know, a dog he's been strip mining and doing all these things. He's No, he's, I'm living here with Ren. He's got okay. money, right? But let's see what we got, man. Like here. Yeah, that's that's all our diamonds. So Okay, you got some here. It's, it's some. I can can give you more than one. But you know they are they are more like a decorative element here. Ren's gonna be Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm three. three yeah, just just do two. Put that last one back and he'll never notice it's missing. Recently, Dotdam has made a pretty amazing uh, shulker box farm, so we came up with a way of settling the debt. It was like eight diamond blocks or something. Yes, 72. Right? Yeah, yeah. But Oh, eight? Eight diamond blocks? Yeah, that's 72. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I so, think so. Yeah. Okay, okay, listen. Um, that means you own all these shulker boxes up there pretty much. Ooh. Or let, or let me see. Like, uh, how many are there? Do you have shells? Because, like, carrying boxes yeah. is kind of uh, cumbersome, you know? Oh, shells, yes. Sure, sure. Okay, I give you two stacks of shells. That's 64 okay. shulker boxes. I think so, that's a deal. Wait, let me, oh, yeah, let me. Wait, I know. Wait, we're so bad at math. Wait, no, I like that I, deal. I like that one. That, that's good for me. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait. One, one Schalke box costs three dollars. No, no, no. no. Right? These are, this is uh, the, the nice face deal, Doc. Don't I have a nice face? I, I gave I, you a nice face deal. Yes, okay, okay. Yeah, all right. Yes. Then come with me. Then, all right. The Crocs. <laughs> Doc's Crocs don't are stink, back. Don't stink him up, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you just go in. And then pretty much, you know... Uh, hold space already so you swim up right so you catch the dolphins grace right away hold forward so w and just look down and sprint Woo <laughs> well, that's pretty good oh dolphin grace ran out yeah that's pretty good does it only i think it only lets me go once i get it right yeah, only once I get it, then I can go. Okay. 
All right. Drop the shoes, man. How about I go back and then uh, then I give them to you? All right, but we have to go in here. Oh, do we? To get okay. the, shy the shiker shells first. All right, yeah. all right. Here you go. go. Let's go. Let's go. <coughs> oh no! You dropped them. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you you might have a few here, Doc. Yeah. Look over there. This chest is even more funny. Oh my goodness, they're full. <laughs> All of them. Dude. <laughs> Two stacks of shiker shells, right? Yeah, something tells me I could take a few from here and you would never notice. I know exactly how many are in there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, snappers. All right, everybody. We are back working on the horse course and it's really starting to take shape now. Things are moving along here. It's kind of funny, when I first saw B-Dub's layout for this, I thought to myself, like, why did B-Dub's make this track so small? <laughs> and now that I'm actually building it, I'm like, why did B-Dub's make this course so big? <laughs> it's taken forever. <laughs> oh, man, I'm about half done now, I would say. But I've been here for hours, and uh, yeah, yeah. But let me show you some of the things. So now around the bend here. Uh, B-Dub's laid out like a shortcut section here. He had like a fork on the road. So this is the long way up over here. It goes along here. And then they meet up over here. I'm thinking like during the race, everybody's going to have a crossbow. Unenchanted probably. And everyone's going to have like a stack of arrows. And they're allowed to shoot as much as they want during the race. Because there's like a, a fairly long reload time. It kind of gives you something to do in the in-between sections as well. Uh, so the idea with this, we come around the bend, we got to shoot that target, which is actually quite difficult. <laughs> oh, I make it look easy though, don't I? No, I've missed that millions of times. I do find the crossbows are easier to aim than like sh throwing snowballs though. So I want this to be a little bit of a risk versus reward situation as well. So if you come around the bend and you miss... It takes a little bit of travel time for that arrow to actually hit the target, and I'm hoping like people will be around here before they realize, oh, I missed, and then they try to go back, and then I got a fence here to kind of catch you. <laughs> it's like, oh, darn, this fence is in my way, so it'll waste a couple seconds, hopefully, for them to give up and get back over here if, uh, if they do miss. So there is a penalty if you try it and you fail. It's like, oh, wait, no, oh, no, fence. Oh, there we go. Uh, you could, like, stop and shoot it, but then you waste time stopping to shoot it, right? <laughs> so there are ways of getting through it, but, like, to do it smoothly without stopping while you're going fast it is quite challenging. Now, if they do do it and they get through, then there's a pressure plate here, which uh, closes the door behind them so no one else can take advantage of the shortcut. And then I put in just a fairly easy obstacle course here. It's like a bunch of little jumps you gotta you gotta do, kind of like before. But if you if you fail one of these, what happens is you you go in the water and then you gotta jump out of it. Or if your horse can't do a two block jump, <laughs> if you're if you're racing with a donkey, there is the option of going back here, and like you can maybe jump from here from the first step and make it if you have a really bad horse there are ways now the long way i think i might be doing a little tweaking on this still like maybe we need to add more obstacles but this is an idea i got from b-dubs to like uh intertwine fences like this so if you got a horse cat that can only jump a block and a half maybe you try jump over this part of it and then you might need to like i should probably add more here Oh, but then you can't get through here, and yeah, let's do a little little bit of tweaking here. <laughs> I'm still too fat. Okay. I kind of want to uh, make it difficult to get through this, right? Um, but yeah, you might have to do a double jump, like one over that, one over this one to get through. But if you have a horse that can do a two and a half block jump, then maybe you can skip part of that and just jump over this section, and then you're, you're through. Or if you have a donkey that can't jump at all, you can just... Uh, intertwine here and crisscross and it'll take a little bit longer yeah so the main idea behind a lot of these challenges is we want to have several different ways of getting through them you can choose which one you want whichever you prefer but ideally we want the 
easier methods to take the longest and the harder methods to be the fastest or require something special like a high jumping horse. This is inspired by ba -ba -ba -ba, Mario Kart uh, 64. I think it was the Cal level with the Monty Moles that jump out in front of you. It's kind of something similar here. You can go over top of the mole holes and most of the time you're fine, but sometimes they'll jump out and uh, slow you down. <laughs> so if you get unlucky, you will run over top of one of these. It'll launch you up and then you're going to hit the fences above us here. I think I need to reposition these though. Or you might take some fall damage or something like that. But the other thing with this, just going over top of the slime block slows down the horse. So ideally you want to try dodge all of these if you can. Uh, so I've been trying to build up these walls. I think they need to go a bit higher. But uh, also I've added a very strange obstacle or challenge at the start here, which I'm still trying to understand myself. <laughs> it's going to be a little hard to explain, but it's it's very nuanced. So like when you're when you're going here, you can see the water's out, right? So ideally you want to hit this and kind of scoot around. And then this is another switch for it which uh, if someone's behind you, they're going to get flooded then. Uh, the thing about the water is it will slow down the horse very drastically. You can kind of jump through it, which is nice. The other weird thing about this challenge, though, is you can jump over top these pressure plates, which changes things quite a bit. So I think the ideal thing you want to do, like if you don't see the water there, I think you want to jump over this. Oh, <laughs> I messed it up. It's also kind of tricky because you're going downhill here, and a lot of times when you try to jump as you're going downhill, it doesn't let you on the horse. I can't clear it that way, so I think you have to be pretty precise with this. But yeah, ideally you want to go when there's... jump over that when there's no water here, and then when you go through, you trigger it. Well, actually, no, I don't think you want to trigger it, right? <laughs> this is a very weird challenge. I think you want it for the next guy to, for there to be no water. So that they get flooded when they go by. I think a lot matters on people's position as well. Like, for example, if someone takes a pit stop, they don't go over the pressure plates. And if they are right behind you after they get out of the pit stop, then you want to trigger this and flood them. But if they're not near you, then I think you want to jump over top of these. So yeah, I've been trying hard here to have a lot of different challenges on the course instead of doing like just a bunch of jumps like this, even though this works very well, I feel. Um, just so that it feels different in places, right? Now, the next big one <laughs> is going to be the drop. This is like a force you take damage, no way around it sort of thing. Kitty, where are you going? I, I know you don't want to do the drop. Uh, so I think the way I want to do this is we'll have like a couple spots where you can land on hay bales. And that's what you're going to be aiming for so that you don't take damage. Otherwise, you take the full amount of damage and you're probably gonna have to stop by the pit stop at some point to heal up maybe we'll have like two two pads here giddy <laughs> are you ready uh i brought over some drip leaves as well i kind of forgot about these things we might be able to use that for the next challenge all right let's see how this works i only took half a heart okay so i think i might have landed properly there because that should be ooh, at least two or three hearts right let's try it again Okay, so that was one heart if we totally missed these. Um, I don't know if that's enough. I think I want a bigger difference. Yeah, I think we're going to dig down probably at least three or four more blocks. You know what? Let's actually test this out properly because I'm not sure what's going on with the, the horse damage here. I expected Giddy to take more damage before. So either horses don't take very much fall damage in general or it's the armor protecting Giddy, I think. I'm going to try to take it off. I did lower this as well, so I would expect Giddy to take, oh, probably at least four or five hearts damage here. Please don't die, Giddy. Heart and a half. So yeah, horses just take less fall damage in general. This time we'll land on the hay bales as well. So we're a heart down right now. Giddy's a heart down. And we took two hearts damage. <laughs> um, Uh-oh. Did I not land very well there? Maybe that's what happened. Because I kind of landed here. Maybe you got to be like really in between all four. But let's try it again here. So we're three hearts down currently. Yeah, that time I only took half a heart damage on Giddy. Okay, so you really got to get in between all four hay bales. 
So a general rule in Minecraft, if you want to try create like a unique mechanic in the game, the way to do it is by combining two or three other game mechanics together to create something kind of special. <laughs> so I really like this next challenge we got here. Uh, we were in a confined area here. I thought this would be perfect. Like we can't jump over these fence gates. Uh, we got drip leaves. We got fence gates and we got redstone all combined together to create this. Now, as you know, if you stand on drip leaves, eventually you fall down. And if you fall down, you have to go the long way. We got to go, go all the way around here. So the way you're supposed to do this drip leaf challenge is you have to be quick. You have to be precise. You got to aim your cursor and you have to right click. So you go and you got to right click these fence gates as you go. And if you take too long, you will fall down. Uh, and then if you, you got someone right behind you, they'll have to take the long way if they fall down. When you go over the pressure plates at the end here, it resets the the fence gates. So yeah, I think this is a really cool challenge because if you do it really well, you won't stop at all. If you, you're a little bit slow, you might hit the fence gate and pause for a second and then get the next one just before you fall through the drip leaf, you know? But if you're really slow, then you'll fall down and you'll have to go the extra long way. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good measure of skill. Um, then uh, with this one, this is pretty cool as well. We got another drip leaf challenge here. So they fall if you stand on them for too long. You got to be quick. You got to get through this. Uh, we have several different routes we can take. Like we can go to this drip leaf. We have a horse that can't jump too well. And then maybe go to this one. Or maybe just try to jump the rest of it. If you do land in the water, it's not like you have to go all the way back and then try again. It's like you just go forward, but you'll have to drudge your way through the water and suffer, you know. So even the worst horse in the world can do this. It'll just take longer. Oh, B-Dubs has his work cut out for him. This is a huge track. And I'm just doing like the rough pass on it. He's got to do all the fine tuning and the, the pertifying. You know, that's going to take even longer, I think. I might need to help him out. Uh, but we're getting pretty close to done with the track here. But we're also getting kind of close to out of time on this episode. Got a couple more things I want to talk about as well. So I might need to finish this last stretch off camera. The plan is to make it pass by here. And as people come down the drop here, they'll see people pass by if they're further along in the course. So that's kind of cool. Goes over top here. And we got this long straightaway. And what I would love to do is have like three or four boosters on the straightaway. Because that's usually where the boosters are in racing games, right? Yeah, so here's the thing. When I think of a speed boost, I'm thinking of Mario Kart. <laughs> like where you get the, the mushroom. Or you go over one of those warp plates and you get a big five second speed boost. And I tried to do that with slime block launchers, but I couldn't get it to work like I wanted. And we can't use speed splash potions. Well, we can, but they last at the very minimum, I think at least a minute. And I just want like a five second boost. <laughs> so that's not really an option. Uh, the other option might be speed arrows. I think you might be able to make a shorter version of these, but I'm not sure. The way I'd want this to work is you'd have to trigger it yourself by shooting it. Because if, you, if you're getting an advantage, I feel like you need to earn it. So you have to aim and hit it, I think. Okay, that works. That worked. That's fine. That's good. I was just thinking about it. And we should really just hop into creative to figure this out. <laughs> so I'm in a creative world right now. These are the arrows in the game. And I haven't messed around with these too much. I don't know which one of these are actually available in survival. And uh, the wiki page wasn't exactly the clearest on this either. Like, this would be amazing. Arrow of the Turtle Master, two seconds of slowness four. That would be an amazing offensive arrow, but I'm guessing that's not possible to create. Poison two for two seconds. I like that. There is an 11 second speed two. Again, that's a bit longer than I would like, but that's probably our best option. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do some brewing and just see which one we can actually make here. So we're going to take some three minute speed potions, add Dragon's Breath. That creates the lingering potion of swiftness. And then we got to combine that with regular arrows and we'll see what length this actually is. They are 22 seconds. Oh, okay, so they might be craftable then. We can add glowstone to those and create the speed two lingering potions, right? Yeah. And then uh, we craft with this. It should be the 11 second one we're looking for. And that might be what we use in our speed boosters. Yeah, it works. Cool. Right, glowstone to... Oh, it makes slowness four? What? <laughs> I thought that made slowness two lingering potions. Wait a second. So I guess these are probably craftable then. Yeah. Okay. So that's better than the turtle master ones. They're easier to easier to make. 
No, wait a minute. Just a second here. Turtle Master is actually slowness six so that's minus 90 percent speed while this is minus 60 percent so we might want turtle master okay so we're back on hermitcraft here and i think i got a plan now so one thing that's important to note i don't think we can shoot our own horse so we can't give power-ups to our own horse like directly from our own crossbow that means we have to use these stations and i think we'll have like three maybe four speed boost stations around the track one of them at the straightaway at least which will give us the speed arrows. And uh, that'll be cool. Did that hit me or? Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's really hard to actually hit the horse with these though. Um, that hit me, not the horse. <laughs> Even though it's like low down here and it really should have hit the horse. And I kind of like that when it hits the horse, it sometimes does a giddy up and wastes like two or three seconds. So that kind of gets it closer to the five second boost I want, you know? <laughs> Uh, the other thing is, I think we should have maybe one jump boost station on the course. If someone wants to get jump boost, it'll work similar to the speed boost stations. And then I think we'll also have like the question box in, in Mario Kart where you get power-ups. And as far as power-ups go, I think we should have the Turtle Master arrows. Maybe slow falling would be a funny thing to shoot at someone. <laughs> I think we should have a regen potion for ourselves that we can throw on the ground as we go by. Uh, that, that'll be like kind of like getting a star, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the idea is these will be up in the air, and as we go by, we can shoot them with our crossbow. And it'll drop an item, a random item from the inventory here. So we'll have like hopefully nine different items. I think cobwebs could be a good one. Fire charges might be a good one. This will, is kind of similar to planting a banana. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, that's bad. Wait a sec. Oh, I got no water. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, no. Oh, man. You know what? On second thought here, let's not use fire. Fire might be a little bit too powerful of uh, a banana. <laughs> That was dangerous. Giddy's fine. Don't worry. She's just resting up. Uh, maybe instead we'll use sweet berries. Sweet berries are kind of a, a good thing. You can plant them easy and they act like a, a slowdown. But they're not like super OP. Cobwebs are probably a bit more OP. Oh yeah, I think that's a strat. Jump and plant it. That way it doesn't slow yourself down as you go. And you don't have to turn your camera. And yeah, all the racers are going to have uh, crossbows on the track. So those kind of function like green turtle shells. We'll have to aim it and hit somebody with it. And when someone gets hit with the arrow, it should make them giddy up. Maybe if not if you're not on the horse. Sorry, giddy. <laughs> I wanted to show people, but it didn't work. Maybe you got to be on the horse for it to happen. But I'm pretty sure if you get shot from a crossbow, you'll freeze for a second or two as well. So it's also a slowdown. As well as uh, taking damage, you have to heal at the, the pit stop. So that's, that should be pretty cool. And as you go along, I think you're going to accumulate quite a bit of damage on the course. Oh no, I suck. <laughs> and yeah, I think we got a, a good chunk of this done. Unfortunately, I'm out of time here, so we'll have to end it for, for today. But I'm going to keep working on this off camera. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Again, sorry for my absence. And until the next one, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.